Welcome to another edition of Jen Sports Corner back at you for Saturday, July 15th, 2023. I'm your host, Jen. Go ahead and introduce Yo, yourself, sir. What's good? It's Chris the Casual Admin from Playmakers Radio and, well, since the last time we talked, all things WNBA. Absolutely, man. Good to have you back in the fold, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been a crazy uh, two, three years. Oh, yeah, man. But, you know, it's been a crazy two, three years, and we have so much to talk about with basketball and boxing and sports. So let's go in, in, into into this uh this mysterious tournament that they just just announced. Okay, okay. so the NBA. I'm reading an article here off of um, MSN.com. The NBA has started an in season tournament coming up this fall, and their plan is to have it be similar to what they have in I guess FIFA or whatnot. And and uh, uh, well, they tried it. In, they tried it in the G League last year, and it actually it was pretty. De- it was pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so this year coming up, they want to have um three brackets. So you'll have five teams per bracket. So for example, if group A in the East would be Sixers, Cavaliers, Hawks, Pacers, Pistons, and then you would have two more brackets of five teams, same thing with the West. Yep. And then you would have um a wild card, I guess, knockout round. Six group winners will advance to the knockout rounds along with two wild card teams, and then you play like a round robin tournament. And then what yep. you have yep. and then what you have at the end, I won't go into all the details, but at the end, the prize money is um fifty thousand dollars for the team that loses in the quarter quarterfinals, a hundred grand for the team that loses in the semifinals, two hundred grand if you lose in the championship, and then the championship winners get five hundred grand a piece for the players. So what are your thoughts on this? The good, the bad, the ugly. Do you like it? Love it? What, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, I dealt with it last year with the G League, and um, am I a fan of it? Uh, not too much. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's it's like, what's the purpose in it? I mean, I know the purpose in it, but it's like, um, like I'm trying to think of how to word it right. Like, like baseball, like I remember the All Star game. It was like whoever won the All Star game got home home field advantage. Right. You you gotta you gotta give me more. Okay, money's cool. I get why they're doing it, but but you gotta get like make it. You you should put the East against the West, and whoever wins gets home. You 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 gotta do. You gotta you gotta throw something on it to make it to make it worthwhile to me. Money's yeah. cool, yeah. but you know why was you thinking about it? I think the exact same thing. I just don't see the purpose. Like the only thing, the only root rational explanation I can think of is that they want to get more of the star players to be playing the earlier games. But like you said, 500,000. 500, okay, cool. That's cool for some of the mid tier and lower tier players, but you're not going to get LeBron or Dame or MB to be playing more games and not, you know, Kawhi well, to be sitting, right? Well, okay. The reason why they're doing it, is because ratings are down. Like, straight up, ratings are down. They're still great. But let, let's keep it 100. Like, are we really watching basketball during football season? What, like, like okay, you, you're into every sport, right? Yeah, yeah. What are you paying more, more attention to in December? Football. Exactly. So all the, all the multi-sports fans are more worried about football right now. Like, the regular season don't mean nothing. And every everybody knows, like, all you got to do is tune in towards, like, the after All-Star break is when it gets good. So they're trying to spice it up a little bit, give people a reason to tune in during during the regular season. Right. I just don't think it's going to work. Nobody – it's not enough incentive there, okay? They're going to have a tournament. whoop de doo okay? Yeah. Right? I mean, it, it could be interesting to see a one-game tournament to see who – who gets knocked out in one game, but it has no long-term effect on it. It has nothing because now, now like you got this tournament, then you got the all-star game, then you have the, and then you have the playoffs, like it, like it's too much. See, and, and I'm glad you brought that up before because I was actually talking to somebody else and was saying it makes sense for the G league players to have that. But for the regular league, I'm like, what is the point? You're not getting home field advantage in the finals. You're not getting, some type of advantage in the playoff, the real playoff. So, like, what is the purpose? Like, I, you know, I, I get the purpose. I just don't yeah. think there's enough incentive. Kawhi, like I said, Kawhi is still going to be sitting down. Who cares? But even if, he play, but 
even if he plays, even if they play, like, all right, so I'm a Clippers fan. The Clippers win it all. Oh, we won the play. We won the tournament. Then, then six months down the road, somebody's gonna be like, "Well, we won the title." So, what what did you really do? Right. And as a football fan, it's still not going to make me tune into the NBA anymore. I don't care. Right. So, you know, all you're going to do only best case scenario, you win five hundred thousand dollars and get to take your wife to dinner. Worst case scenario, you blew your anchor out in in the so called championship of the tournament. That's what I'm afraid about. Yeah. If anything, they should be shortening the season, which you'll never do. But nobody, I I have the same critique for baseball as I have for basketball. It doesn't matter what way you try to polish a turd; it's still a turd. I'm not going to tune in until the second half when things start heating up. I just don't care enough. I I might tune in, like, and you know me, I'm a diehard basketball fan. I might tune in if there's an interesting matchup. Sure. They like if, if I'm seeing the Spurs, if I'm seeing the Spurs go against the Rockets, two young teams, all right, I might, but I would probably tune into a regular season game of that. Right. It's, I don't it's know. Not, it's not going to hurt them. It's just not going to have the effect they're intending. I don't think. I don't. I don't think it's gonna. And I agree. I don't think it's gonna have the effect. I feel like it's gonna be a. Um, it might just be a test. And I don't like the test things because that's what they do in the G League. Like the G League, mm -hmm. I love the G League. But there were times we're sitting there and we're like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and nobody understood like how this works. So you, everybody's like going through the crowd and, it, and, it, and what's that game? Like, remember the game where you whisper in somebody's ear and it goes to the next person? Yeah. It was kind of like that. Like, I remember the game like, <laughs> No, nah, the one game it was it was the it was the Nets against the uh the Blue Coats. And Lewis King um Lewis King tied the game up with zero seconds left. So everybody's like, well, what's going on? How does this work? Like, how does overtime work in the G League? So eventually it started working its way down. Oh, da 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 da. This is how it works. First one to seven wins. And we're, we're like, okay, this this could be kind of interesting. Okay. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? But but certain things that you see tested out don't – like the play-in tournament, yeah, it was kind of cool to watch it on TV, but did it change anything? No. Not not to me, it didn't. Right. It, this is like one of the first times where I've heard an idea that I really don't see the end game in. You know, out of all the things that – you know, whether you have rule changes here with the NBA or rule changes with the NFL, they try to move the, the – um, touchback line to the 25, like those things make sense. Like you, you can rationalize why they're doing it. This yeah. outside of trying to make more money, it's, it's still not going to bring more people into the stadium. That's I don't understand. Like we try to rebrand this as a tournament. It's still not going to make me buy a ticket to come to the game. Like I'll just catch it later. That's my thing. Like, and, and not just that, my, 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 my issue is what happens if Joel Embiid goes down? Like number one, number one, if you're if you're a player, <laughs> player no, I'm 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 being complete. I'm thinking of of players that are that are notorious with injuries. Like, mm -hmm. what if LeBron goes down? What if what if yeah? What if somebody major goes down? Are you willing to put? Are you willing to put that player in for this tournament? Exactly, they're not going to. So like, though, though I think I think one of the things I heard is there's like a minimum of 22 minutes you have to play or 20 minutes or something like that, and it's like. Oh. Okay, like they'll they'll space out their time and make sure they're not really getting that much wear and tear, and they're just they're not going to. You know but what I mean? is an NBA player really stressing five hundred thousand? No. The the if you the go to movie, you go to movie theaters, Chris, right? I don't know yeah. what you get for condiments, but you get popcorn, you get some soda, and you get some some candy. You go into the theater and you're like, oh man, I'm running low. But the movie's really good. Are you really going to go back out to get like a, a hot dog or nachos? Don't test me. Don't test me because there's been movies. There's been, <laughs> yo, there's been really good movies. What movie was it? I forget. It was a Marvel movie. I know that. <laughs> and I remember I had to go to the bathroom so bad, so bad. <laughs> I'm like sitting there, like, can we just get to the end credit scene? But I would not move. Exactly. Like you're but, not. It's not going to like if I'm watching John Wick. 
I'm not going back out to get more popcorn. I'm going to watch him like go through like the the plot and whatnot. Like it's just not yeah. enough incentive for me to want to get out of my seat and go get more. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's my thing. Like popcorn will be there for the next movie. You, you follow me? So I think if anything, to be honest, if if I was to give my honest opinion, you have like I would move the NBA season to like. Because I remember what year was it? Uh, I want to say the lockout season. There was a season where, oh, it was the COVID season too, where they pushed it back to December, like the middle of December. Yeah. And it was like, okay, like football's kind of wrapping up, but the NBA's kind of started. Right. And, and then on top of that, there's, guess what? There's only a certain amount of teams that make the playoffs. So all the teams that don't make it to playoffs, guess what? They're going to watch basketball. That's right. what I'm saying. Like so that, like so you said, that made more way more sense. Even if you didn't want to shorten season, push it back. I, push it back. Put start it in December and end it. Shit, give me okay. So we're pushing it back November. We're pushing it back a month and a half, two months. What that would mean? Uh, we stretch it out to July, August ish. So what? Right. That means it ends. It it means basketball ends, and I get to. Get into football. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I think that would actually do more justice to them financially in terms of making more money. Yeah, people, I mean. Because I'm telling you right now, I'm starved for football right now. And if basketball was still on, I'd be locked in, laser locked in. You that's what I, mean? what I mean. A football fan, I hate to say it, but it's the truth. A football fan is a football fan. Yeah. Like, Sunday, don't even put a game on. on don't put an NBA game on. Don't put a WNBA game. There's no point. No, you you know, like, and that's just how it is. So just like with the XFL, when they tried to compete with the NFL, you're not gonna win. See, see, that's a little different though, because I see that as um, the the NBA doesn't have an equivalent of that. Whereas no, 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 no. But that's what I'm saying. Like, if, if all right, so the Sixers are on and they're playing the Warriors, the Eagles are on and they're playing. I don't know. The Chargers. Which one are you watching? The Eagles. A football fan is oh, a football fan is not gonna be like, oh, there's a midseason tournament. Let me change the channel. No, no. And, and it's time for people to realize, like, not people, but realistically, tell the world, Chris. Realistically, you want me to say this? I'm not gonna say. <laughs> No, but a football fans like locked in. Like your Monday, you Sunday, you you're watching the games. Monday, yo, everybody's watching Monday night football. I don't care if it's like the fucking Jacksonville Jaguars and and I don't know. You could have the two worst teams in the NFL, and people are still gonna be locked into that game. Yeah, because reality is reality. There's set. What is it now? It's eighteen games, seventeen, seventeen. Yeah. 17 there's 17 games so they mean the most they are a higher percentage your team loses one game too many it's over it's not like baseball baseball you got 161 games or 100 100 like you know every every game's like 0.01 percent you have 80 games too many in baseball too so you know that's a yeah whole. like if you miss them the the Phillies are having a three game series with the Braves. If you miss one, just let's go tomorrow. If you miss the second one, catch it the next day. Exactly, exactly. So like, I, you know, we'll 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 see how how things shake up. I'm gonna be interested to just see how it plays out. Um, you know what I mean? So people in the comments, let me know what you think. Leave your comments. You know, do you like it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let us know. And then um, I want to transition over to the Sixers. You know, everybody knows with you know James Harden is, is he going to get traded? Where is he going? But one thing that James Harden has said yeah. that he wants to go to the Clippers, and that's it. Okay. Um, Can I drop? I would drop the mic, but don't break it. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm kind of glad you talked about James Harden because this is another thing that is wrong with the NBA. Like players are telling teams where they want to go, and they're saying it out loud. Dame Lillard, I only want to play in uh I only want to play in Miami. James Horton, I only want to play in the Clippers. For what? Look, um, 
not that I think it should be reversed, but this is what happens when you have fully guaranteed contracts in sports. They have the leverage to do and say that. You don't see that in football for that very reason. Yeah, but but neither has a no trade clause. Hmm. I mean, I mean, I th- there, I there's literally. Good. I yeah. watch riot comedy. Shout out to them. <laughs> like I love them. You know, I'm I'm always for the dumb shit. But yeah. riot comedy had a thing where Jason Tatum's coming up through like a jail cell to get Dame out of Portland, and he's like, "No, I only want to go to Miami." Like people are making fun of this stuff now. Yeah, because it's like a, a kid throwing a temper tantrum. But I, you know, with, with Dame, I I get it. Um, uh, but uh, I don't get it. I get it, but I I. How much leverage does a team have when you say, "Uh, Jen, I don't want to come on your podcast. I'm only going on to ESPN." Well, now we have to send them to ESPN. Like, how much lever? How much leverage does that team have? Yeah, they're not going to get nearly as much as they could. Um, you know. And then it comes down to a chess match, a chess match of chicken, if you will. Like who's yeah. going to first, right? Yeah. Very precise with your movements, but you're putting a lot of pressure on the team to have to really negotiate like it's World War II. And <laughs> like, not just that, like, like, oh, shout out to Stephanie, even though she frustrates me sometimes. I love her. That's my homie. But we were talking about last year with the Rudy Gobert trade. You're mm. giving up eight players for a mark. I don't want to say marginal, but a marginal all-star. That was wild to me, that trade. I was like, you got that much for him? I'm like, man, we better get everything for uh, for God Corcoran's. And that's what everybody's saying now. Like, yeah. if you're going to trade somebody, I better get at least eight, nine players. Because if you're getting that for Rudy Gobert, what should you get for Embiid? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so like, that, that would, again, play into the James Harden and Dan Lillard thing. Um, I know that you, as as a team, and especially as an agent, you don't want to hear your player coming out and saying that. But at the end of the day, they're still going to – the guy is valuable enough, teams are going to want to give up something to get him. I mean, the same thing yeah. happens in, in uh, NFL as well, especially guys that have no trade clauses, right? Um, back – way, way back in the day, we saw this with Terrell Owens. He yeah. got traded to Baltimore, but he didn't want to go. So he said, I'm not going. <laughs> so they had – the Eagles gave up an extra third-round pick to go get him. And Brandon Whiting, who we don't even remember who he is. No disrespect, Brandon Whiting. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is a tale as old as time. So uh, James Harden is – he has a couple spots he can land at. And is he going to change his mind? Is he not going to change his mind? Who knows? Um, I don't I don't think we'll really know probably until late August, September when things start heating up again. But that's what I'm saying. Like if he says I only want to go to the Clippers, now you're now you're in a position where the Clippers know that hey, we don't have to give you what you want. And no other team's gonna step in. Yeah. Nobody, I, well, I, I wouldn't step more. in if I was any other team anyway. Like look at what James Harden has done. <laughs> no, no, well, that's I'm well, well, think about it. Think about it. He just came off an incredible season, no matter how you want to shake it. I know it ended off on a on a sour note. They choked in game six, five and six. I get that. But you still had average a double double and what would it the vote for the first combo to have the leader in assists and points per game? Okay. Since since um what Gervin in the Spurs, like 40 years ago. Okay. But that's gonna be the selling point. Right, but I need to know what's James Harden eating right now. Uh, he eating what's what's his diet? He eating Chick Fil A. You know that. Okay. <laughs> right here. So so are we putting the fat suit on come September October? Yep. Yeah, and he's gonna take it off in October. You get what I'm saying? Like, do you really like? I'm t- I'm I'm getting like. See now you're stirring up all the frustration <laughs> with these players. Like like no because like I don't want to play here. Like because didn't Ben Simmons said he wanted to play in Brooklyn. Did he? I don't remember. Yeah, I just didn't care. Okay, sure. Yeah, we we didn't care. Yeah, I didn't care either. I, James Harden, James Harden went put the Fed suit on in Houston, mm-hmm. came to Brooklyn, said I want out of Brooklyn, came to y'all. Now he says he wants out of Philly. Like, would you really take a chance on this guy? Uh, I wouldn't, but there are many teams that would. For what? For him to not be happy? 
And, and 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 like these players are coming down, like like look at Ben Simmons' contract, thirty seven million. We took it like suckers. Y'all got us for that. Yeah, we did. Y'all got us. He goes and puts up what six point seven points per game, and now we're stuck with him. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, Chris. I was thinking about you during that playoff series. I don't want to talk about. I don't want to talk about because <laughs> probably because like because Stephanie, the other the, man, like she's the other uh graphic designer, uh, whatever you like, content creator. That's the word we always use. Mm -hmm. But when Jacques Vaughn says you're making 37 million, 35 million, but you're better off not even being on the bench. We got a problem. That's bad. That's, That's bad. Y'all, y'all hornswoggled us. At least give us a washing machine. Um, you asking too much, man. <laughs> <laughs> you ask her too much. I don't care if it's one of the ones that you put the coins in, like you nah, know, like nah, nah, no, we, you know what we do? We we'll give you, we we'll give you the cheese grater that you like, you know, wash the the, the shirt. I don't care, like, <laughs> um, look, like, I, got, I, I, I I knew it would be about a good week or two weeks before you guys started hating him immediately once he got there. I hated him the moment they traded it, and I'm not even gonna hold it. I'm not even older because I saw, I saw what 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 everybody was talking about. Like, yo, this guy hasn't played in a year and a half. Like, I know I made the little jokes. If you want, if you if you're on my Facebook, I know I made the little jokes about we're gonna win it, win a title, and he's gonna win MVP. But I knew it wasn't reality. You do that every year with every team you have, Chris. Because I have faith. Yeah, ill place. Um, but <laughs> I had faith. I had faith. Because let's be honest. Can Ben Simmons play ball? Yes. You go. Willie. Come on. You remember when we were down at the, the blue and white game? Yeah. 18. Yeah. This dude was going around the court, the three-point line, just knocking down shots like he was Larry Bird, right? We know he can shoot. Remember, he just, what, like, has a refusal what, to do it. Were you at the pre? Were you at the preseason game that we were at, and he looked, like, right in our direction? I'm not going to say he looked at us. But he looked right in our direction and pulled up the three right at halftime. It was against like a, the I, Chinese. I, rem I remember it you. Was the first um, one. I, I wasn't there, but I remember you telling me that you were in the crowd when he hit it from the. Um, yeah, the he, like, yeah. he backed up and sat there like, everybody get up because you know I'm about to hit this three. Yeah. He he looked like Steph Curry. Like I, I took my glasses off. I was like, is that Steph? Oh, man. It, yes. It's just, right? Yes. Like. That's what's frustrating about him. It's not that he can't do it. It's like a refusal. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't even know if he can do it anymore though. Maybe not. We don't know. Atlanta broke him down. Atlanta broke him down. They did. They did. Unfortunately, that was the beginning of the end for that dude, man. Uh on a brighter note, you know, silver lining, even though he's not here, Mel Markel Folks turned turned his career around. I'm so happy for that dude, man. Let me. All right, since you're a Sixers fan, I never said this. I've, if you could go back in time, would you have rather kept Markel Fultz instead of Ben Simmons? Yeah. Because I mean, I feel like it took a minute for Markel Fultz to, 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 you know, what I mean, come into his own. It did. It did. Um, I always liked him, even when he left. I don't really root, I don't root for any other teams, but, but I would tune into the Magic games from time to time just because I was interested. Like, how's this guy doing? Like, oh, he's doing better. You know what I mean? So, because imagine he, you could have you could have, you could have Fultz, you could have had Jimmy Butler, you could have had Tobias Harris. Don't get me started on Jimmy Butler. I'm still steaming from from that. They <laughs> they let this man walk in order to give Tobias the max and be able to keep Ben Simmons. Like, that just burns me to my soul, man. Like, all you do is get rid of Ben Simmons. Yeah, I was like, I'll drive him to the airport. But they were like, nah, let's just... You know what? Oh. If, if they wanted to keep Ben, fine. I don't care. But keep yeah. Jimmy Butler, okay? If that meant losing Tobias, I, I like Tobias. But, like, Jimmy Butler... I like Tobias. Tobias you, you, like, that's a no-brainer, man. Like, come on. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what they're doing. But one interesting move that they made this offseason... Okay. And an enigma, Mo Bamba. Just signed him to a, a vet minimum contract, I think, one or two weeks ago. 
And I was just looking yeah. at a video about him and, and Bol Bol and their time with the Magic. And it was pretty fascinating. They're talking about for a franchise that consistently develops all-star center talent, Vucevic, Shaq. I mean, you could just like go down the line, Dwight Howard. Oh, yeah. Like how they just fell so far off the mark. And this guy was going through the breakdown. Mo Bamba, I, I want to know, is he going to be able to – become a face-up center because he has a solid three-point shot, but he has a propensity for pulling up for the jump shot every time he comes down the court, and he's lots of days ago on defense. And I, I just – I wonder if this coaching staff with Nick Nurse can get anything out of him. What do you think? What do I think? Uh, well, first I think with MB starting, that kind of like takes some of the pressure off. Sure. He's not going to be in there for no 30 minutes doing. So I think that takes a little pressure. Off. You still got um, um, Montrez. Montrez, how are you? So maybe, maybe, and I've, and, I've, and, and me and Stephanie talk about this. I hate, I hate to bring it up, but me and Stephanie talk a lot about things. And I'm feeling like a lot of teams are coming to a point where one can be the four and one can be the five on offense and one can be the five and one can be the four on defense. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like maybe on offense, Mo Bamba could be the four and be offensive, but maybe slide back. You know what I mean? On the, on the floor with Montrez. Right. And I, I, I just find him fascinating because the talent is still there. So like when yeah. he comes off the court, Mo Bamba can bring you that shot blocking ability. Yeah. But what you're going to, have to do is get him to be engaged every play. Cause I saw a lot of plays where, they come down to court, either make or miss a shot, and then immediately not get back in transition defense, and boom, you got somebody streaking down the court layup. Yeah, you yep. and bowl bowl, same thing, right? So you know, it's it's really just no excuse for like the mental errors. Yeah, right? more than anything, like the physical talent is is there. He's a young dude. He, he's supremely talented. Um, I think if anybody, I think Nick Nurse, after getting what he got out of that Raptors team, which is not. They, they shouldn't have even been in playoffs, but he just got every ounce of blood out of that rock. You know what I mean? Yeah. If he can't get him up there to where he needs to be, then I don't think anybody will. I mean, and and, and you also got to remember, it's just a vet minimum. Right. Which right. This, this day and age, vet minimum, what's it hurt? Worst comes to worst, you slide him down to the G League. <laughs> right. It's never to be heard from again, right? Yeah. Uh, no, nah, yo, y'all sleep no, on no, the no, G League. No, 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 no. I'm being facetious. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, no. A lot of people sleep on the G League, but the G League is the truth. Yo, um, different sport, but Roy Halladay, Hall of Fame pitcher for the Phillies. Yeah. At one point, he was struggling so bad with the Blue Jays before he came to Philadelphia. They sent him down to the minor. Yeah. Yeah, to, to, re, to recalibrate his throwing motion. And he yep. came back a Hall of Fame level pitcher. He was always pretty think, good, yeah. But I and, I, and I know where you're going because there was uh, Roger Clemens, he played for the Trenton Thunder. Mm-hmm. Um, that, was a, been, that was injury, though. That was injury. Yeah, but, but that's what I'm saying. Like, these are all, no, they, they've had notable players in AAA. Yeah. You know I mean, I'm, I'm talking about baseball. Right, right, right. And I feel like the G League is just finding their role in that position. Like, hey, let's bring in these players. I think eventually maybe it might even – it might become that, where a player goes down and just goes to to XYZ team in the G League for a game or two just to get their, get their rhythm back. And I think that should be the purpose of the G League, along with developing a new talent. I, I mean, I can see I, – I don't see, like – I know they I'm got to say their egos aside, but you know uh-huh. they they're gonna have to push their egos aside for some guys. But that is what the G League should be in addition to. Uh, who did I yeah. who, like now? I'm like I've I've met Denzel Valentine last year. Um, hmm. the boy from North Carolina. Shoot, I can't. He he would kill me if he saw it. I, but I, there was like a lot of players that I saw, and you would and you would talk to them, and they'd be like, "I'm not gonna be here for long." Uh, Chris Dunn was there. Oh really? Yeah, I was there. I was talking. I was talking to Chris Dunn. He was like. He's like, I'm just doing what I got to do. He's like, I'm going to prove to somebody I can play, and I'm going to get back. Sure enough, he went right to the Jazz. Mm. So I think I think the G League is actually finding their footing after how many years and, like, finding their, like, okay, like, this is where we're going to develop players. 
and a lot of players are going to be like, okay, I'm not in the league. I'm going to show y'all I can still play. I think maybe changing the letter, just the rebranding just made them more relevant because the D League was almost like where you went to die before. Yeah. Uh, it's like the G League. Look, we went to game. I went to games with you and whatnot. Yeah. I was like, yo, like there, there's actually time. We saw a shake before he came up. Yeah. Oh, oh guys, right? Yeah. And and you know the games. Who's there that back yeah. then? There was like Shake, Corkmaz had just come up. Right. Uh, uh something. What, what was his name? I forget. There was a couple players, but like this year's G League team for the Blue Coats was was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, like I. Like, oh yeah, uh, McClung, McClung. Yeah, yeah, McClung, Yeah. Uh, Patrick McCall, who was like the three-time NBA champion with uh with the Warriors and the Raptors, he was there. Uh, Jaden Springer, of course, the Sixers' first first-round draft pick, got MVP of the league. Nice. Like who else? Uh, Champagne, who ended up going to uh San Antonio. Michael Foster Jr., who honestly, like he said, like me and him talked, he said all he all he needs is a chance. Yeah. Six foot ten, nineteen year old backing up MB. Why not? Um, Charlie Brown, amazing talent. Skylar Mays, who ended up with Portland. Lewis King, who's actually going to Miami right now with uh with my guy with with Hayward Highsmith. He that's who was there when we was there. Who that? Hayward Highsmith. Yeah, he was. Oh, he was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Year. Um, and of course, Matt. Mm-hmm. Like all those incredible talent. There was. I know there's more. I just ain't got their pictures on my wall. Like, but there was um. Uh, Psycho uh, Diam, I can't pronounce his name, and he'd kill me because he was the number 15 pick in the draft one year and he got picked by the Pistons. And he talked shit to LeBron, but he gave me a jersey after he, I got a jersey after a game. So, oh god, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, there's 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 a there, there's a lot of talent in G League, don't sleep on it, definitely not, man, definitely not. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. I, I'm just very curious about, um. Obama and how he develops, but um, let let us know what you guys think about that. Um, what do you comment. think about the moves? What do you think about the moves the Sixers are making overall? Um, I think they're solid, and then we'll see what happens with James Harden. But they're making solid moves so far, just to kind of round out the roster. 